Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. Now today's workout is perfect if you've got right about 25 minutes free in the day and you want to do a tough row. This isn't going to be a maximum row but it's going to be a tough row okay. So like I said it's going to last 25 minutes and what we're going to do is a four minute warm up followed by one minute of drills then straight into three minutes at a kind of really elevated intensity high um, stroke rate up at around about 28 strokes a minute and your pace is going to kind of really be up there. It's going to be like basically a pace that you can just hold on to for those three minutes and then you're really thankful when we then have one minute of our uh, active rest okay. So still a little bit of rowing but you're going to back the intensity right off. Then after that one minute we're going to go up and we're going to do two minutes even faster okay. So 30 strokes a minute and a couple of seconds faster in terms of your pace. Then we're going to get one minute of rest and then we're going to do one minute even faster okay. Up at around about 32 strokes a minute and a little bit faster still. But then the good news is you're going to get four minutes rest okay just to kind of back off that intensity just to let your body recover and then we're going to do it all over again and then we're done okay and then our 25 minutes will run down on the clock and all will be finished okay so it's a really good workout to kind of get it up there. 25 minutes will just fly through and it's just an important one in terms of the intensity you put in there that you make sure and keep it up there in order to get the workout benefit. There's no point hiding from this one is what I'm trying to say. So we need to get our machine set up first before we can start today's row and on an Averon that means setting your resistance. Now as a guide I normally set my uh, warm up resistance to around about 7 but I'm going to have my actual workout resistance today up at 12. So that might give you kind of a variation for what you want because you want to make sure this is a good hard workout for you. If you are using the Averon app for Concept2 just leave your drag factor wherever you normally set it for a row okay. If you don't know anything about drag factor set your lever to run about 5 because too high is the problem here not too low. So 5 is okay then read about drag factor afterwards alright. So next up foot straps you want to set them to a height where you're able to come into the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position comfortably okay. If you're set too high in the straps it can get a bit difficult to get there. If you're set too low in the straps you can go scooting straight past and that then causes power leaks and things and you don't want that. So a good guide is that you have the foot strap covering the bottom lace in your shoe which will cover the balls of your feet okay. So that's a kind of a good way to start Then you can adjust from there as you get more kind of used to how it feels up and down a bit right. I'm flanneling obviously I'm flanneling so we better get into this. So, so hopefully you are ready make sure I have a quick drink while I'm just saying these last couple of words. We're going to do uh, the warm up for four minutes remember uh, starting at a nice gentle intensity we're going to just increase through those four minutes to get ourselves ready. One minute of drills and then we're going to get into the main session immediately all right. So if you are ready to go we are going to get started in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. So like I say we're warming up first. So nice and gentle just get the body moving. Make sure you're not kind of jerking in and out and asking your body to do something that it's quite frankly not prepared for. <laughs> so prepare your body with a warm up. That's why it's called a warm up. It's not hit. It's not called a hit the ground running as fast as you can up is it? No. So really what you're concentrating on for the first minute or two here is body angles and then the timing of pushing with your legs at the same time your hands connect the handle to the machine. To that point when you can feel it like bite into the machine when whatever you're using starts to move you want to be pushing with your legs at the same time okay. Because if you push too soon your backside escapes from you and if you pull too soon you can't get the power in from your legs. It's as simple as that. And then body angle wise you want to make sure you're tilted forwards over your hips at the front of the machine. You hold that position as you push with the legs and then only when you're halfway through the leg drive do you swing into that backwards tilt and then pull in your arms as you're doing that swing. So tilt forwards, tilt backwards, forwards, backwards okay. So tilting and timing that's really how you start your warm ups and then usually your body kind of takes care of itself in terms of a nice low intensity and getting your muscles moving and blood pumping. 
but now that we're two minutes into this warm-up I want you to think about that intensity and I want you to take it up to an intensity where you can feel your heart rate start to climb starts to get a little bit more of laboured breathing you're like your breathing rate goes up but it doesn't feel like hard work okay especially because we're about to do a session that is hard work don't get into it quite yet <laughs> as ever I describe this as the same intensity as walking up a flight of stairs okay so if you just had say six seven flights of stairs and you were walking up them all you'd end up kind of out of breath and stuff wouldn't you and that's kind of what you're looking for intensity wise for this warm-up and then this is kind of what I describe as five six out of ten effort my heart rate is run about 60% of my maximum breathing is up I know I'm putting in some kind of force and I know my body is getting warm hips are loosening up as are my arms and shoulders but what we're going to do is in 30 seconds time we'll spend a minute doing drills just to make sure our body is moving properly before we then start our first three minutes at quite a up there intensity okay so like eight out of ten I'm looking for I want you to put the effort in for those three minutes okay two more strokes and we'll start drills so get those legs straight and then just swing over your back pull in your arms out with your arms rock forwards with your back again so you're just rowing with your back and arms no legs maybe a slight soft bend to them as you come forwards but you're not really pushing with your legs all you're practicing working on here is that pumping forwards and backwards of your hips and your arms pulling and then releasing okay one more here let's roll into the front straight arms forwards tilt and just use your legs this time okay so whereas before you were only using back and arms now you're just using your legs keep those arms straight this is so important you keep those arms straight and that forwards tilt too so a few strokes time and I want you to get that stroke rate up to around about 28 okay let's take one more here you ready let's go so you want to push harder with your legs and what that will do is give you an increased drive speed as well as putting more power into the machine so what you should hopefully have found is that you're going possibly 12 to 14 seconds faster than you were during the warm-up just as a result of increasing stroke rate because you're pushing harder with the legs but remember that faster drive speed needs to be matched by an increase in recovery speed too you still want the drive to be faster than the recovery but when trying to increase stroke rate you need both halves of the stroke to be faster and if you struggle with that then pay attention to how you are releasing 
the handle from your body one minute to go here you want the handle to smoothly come back out from your body the moment it touches your chest there are some drills where you hold it against your chest but we're not doing drills so in and out in a fluid motion you're not scared of the handle you're just in and out let the handle guide your recovery okay two more strokes one more and now back down the intensity as low as you need to you can and of course take this as a total rest but if you can stick to round about 20 strokes a minute and your warm-up pace then that will give you a like a well fuller workout because you're going to be working the whole time oh. so I've got two minute chunk next and we're going to take stroke rate up to 30 so push just that tiny bit harder with your legs two more strokes one more you ready let's go now one of the lovely things about 30 strokes a minute is that it's just one stroke every two seconds so you can kind of keep an eye on your timer if you're not watching me and as long as you are driving every two seconds you should be up at 30 strokes a minute and as a result of that extra power and taking two strokes extra every minute you should be going one or two seconds faster if you're training based on a average 2000 meter pace you're probably around about two seconds slower than your 2k average right now if it helps my warm up was at 156 I'm now rowing at 138 got how many oh yeah 10 strokes to go then we get another rest keep that intensity up there's no point hiding before the rest three two one let's take that easy minute obviously if you need to stop and have a drink do that there's no heroics on a training session like this especially one that has built in rest periods you're not going to win any prizes for struggling through dehydrated okay so five more strokes to go and then we've got one minute at 32 strokes a minute probably your 2k pace or faster or whatever you can muster 
at 32. Okay, one more stroke. You ready? Let's go. Oh. So this is really where rhythm plays such an important part in terms of making sure you're not choking your stroke. Ideally, you still want to try to get full slide until shins are vertical. And this is really where you'll notice that if you don't get that handle away from you smoothly and quickly, it becomes harder to keep the rate up. One more stroke. There we go. So that's us done the first half of this workout. So we're going to take four minutes to settle down in between. And this is why I suggest keeping the intensity up in that first half. Possibly a little late to be telling you this. Is because no matter how tired and ragged you may have got in that first half, you've now got these four minutes to prep yourself for the second half. So I'm still at my 156 warm up pace. I'm just letting my body move through the stroke. So slide until shins vertical, arms straight, forwards tilt, push the machine at the same time my hands connect. And usually the rest of the stroke then takes care of itself. If you can think about pushing with your legs, with straight arms, you could use this time to set yourself up technique wise, where you get your body in and out of the right positions, practice it here, grind in that technique so that when you get tired and fatigue sets in, because don't worry, fatigue sets in for anybody. Even Olympic rowers fatigue. But the point about technique and stuff is if you can grind in to your muscle memory a good technique in your body remembers how it's supposed to row. It means that when you get tired and you're no longer really consciously thinking about how you're rowing and your subconscious takes over, the subconscious that you've created for rowing is hopefully a good one. Oh, right, one minute to go and then we're going to go back through the whole thing again. Okay, so we're starting off three minutes, 28 strokes a minute. And if you can, try to hit the same paces or faster than you did the first time round. This is another workout that if you ever come back to it, having done it once, if you can remember how it felt and how fast you were rowing, you can learn what your body is capable of. Is it capable of more? Or do you have to do it a little less to survive? <laughs> okay, three, 
two, one. Let's take that rate and pace up. So round about 28 strokes a minute. And even though we are a fair way through this workout, there's a good chance that you're actually feeling a little bit more in control and powerful this time round at the start at least because your body is now kind of primed and used to rowing at this kind of 8, 9 out of 10 intensity whereas the first time round even with that five minute warm up there's a good chance your body was like oh, what are you doing? And that's one of the reasons that variety is so good when rowing because it keeps your body guessing because the last thing you want whether it's training or weight loss or whatever you don't want your body to get used to what you're doing and plateau because if all you ever do is long slow rows eventually your body just gets good at becoming efficient in burning energy for a long slow row so what you find is any fitness improvements or weight loss you may have seen just plateaus so by incorporating rows like this one with an increased intensity your body will be like what's going on here I have to forget how I've been dealing with this before and throw more energy use more muscles okay 10 seconds we're almost done on this one one more stroke let's take it back a notch back down to 5 out of 10 warm up pace round about 20 strokes per minute ok and then in just over 30 seconds time we'll take it back up to 30 strokes a minute for 2 minutes oh. we're close to the end all you have to do is hang on for 3 more minutes of intense rowing and you'll be all finished plus a minute rest <laughs> ok one more stroke here let's take it up to 30 so remember one stroke every 2 seconds get that handle away from you smoothly as the handle comes away that should be what triggers your forwards tilt so that by the time your hands are past your knees your body is already tilted forwards and all you need to do is bend your knees to get into the front of the machine again keep that intensity up I know it's easy 
to think that this is hard, but you've still got a minute in you if you've been pacing this right. I mean, it's meant to feel tough. Trust me, I am watching the clock, praying for the end of this minute so I can get that rest. But importantly, I don't need to stop. And actually, it's just my brain telling me maybe it would be more comfortable to stop. But we don't need to, because I've only got six strokes to go. Ready? Four, three, two, one. Back to warm up pace. It can be easy to back right off on these rest periods. Oh, I'm down at two minutes pace now. Come on, add a bit more oomph. It's just your brain telling you your body isn't actually that tired. Your brain is just like, we don't need to be working this hard. But we do if we want to get faster or get maximum benefit from this row. Two more strokes and then our last minute. One more. Here we go. So get rate up to whatever high number you're comfortable with but hopefully higher than you've been so far. And then as being, we're coming up for 30 seconds to go, you should have a sprint in you. So either increase stroke rate or increase power from your legs or do both. 130, come on. 10 seconds. One more. Oh. 124 finish for me. Don't worry about my pace, it's all about you. I just thought I'd tell you in case you were interested. So, let's do some light rowing while I say goodbye. Just get your body moving. Just think about good posture. Up on your sit bones. And then that tilt forwards, tilt backwards and straight arms. Just to get moving, flush your blood through your muscles get that carbon dioxide out of there now remember I do have a proper standalone cool down up here so hunt for that two minute cool down plus stretching or maybe you're now gonna go do something in the gym who knows but just make sure to cool down at one point, okay? Don't just stop. Even this minute on its own is better than nothing. Right, you can take a row while I say goodbye, okay? Whew. Hi, so 25 minutes, and I really hope you'll agree the time absolutely flew by there. That was a really quick 25 minutes for, for, for me. And from a heart rate point of view, I was right up there. From an effort point of view, I was definitely right up there. Like I said, towards the end, I was finding it tough. I knew I didn't have to stop. And that's the point of a roll like that, is you wanna work hard enough that 
you kind of you feel like you want to stop, but you know you don't have to, okay? And that's the intensity you're looking at if ever you come back and do this row again, okay? So thank you so much for joining me for this one. Um, remember, I've got a whole bunch of other workouts up here. Hopefully you'll find me uh, in one of them and you'll enjoy that one too. Who knows? Ha. Do get in touch and let me know on the Facebook groups or wherever. And of course, if you are going to post this on your socials, I want you to leave a hashtag. And the hashtag today is going to be no need to stop. Quite a long one again, but hey, it's not like people actually hunt them out, so apart from me. So no need to stop, because although you might have wanted to, you didn't need to, okay? So that's the point of that as a hashtag. So thank you so much for joining me in this one. Um, like I said, make sure and cool down, stretch and stuff, uh, and then I will see you in a future video. Until then, please look after yourselves, take care, be well, bye-bye.